Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Hakuna La Planta. My name is Kevin, and guys, today's the video y'all been waiting for. So this is going to be a complete guide to growing plants in LECA and passive hydroponics. And for those that don't know my story, about a year ago, I transferred close to all of my plants to LECA and passive hydroponics, and they have been thriving ever since. My experience is mainly with aeroids like monsteras and philodendrons, but I also have great success with other plants like hoyas and epipremnums. This video has a lot in it, so I'm going to insert kind of like a time card to the side here. And if you want to skip to a certain part, there is going to be a time included on, I guess, different topics in the video. So first I will talk about the main components when it comes to hydroponics. I'm going to talk about LECA, water, more specifically the quality of water, what nutrients to use, pH, and the type of planter or pot planter pot. What's the difference? After this, I will include the step-to-step -step process of mixing my nutrient solution. And after this, I will show you the complete process from beginning to end of transferring a plant from soil to LECA and passive hydroponics. So there's a lot to talk about in this video, but before I start, if you like these kind of videos and you like my content, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel. And also follow me on Instagram if you like plant pictures. I post pictures every single day. Okay, so let's get on with the video. So starting off with LECA. LECA stands for Lightweight Expanded Clay Aggregate. They're basically these round, lightweight balls of clay that will serve as your growing medium for your plants. LECA is great to use when you're growing plants just because when LECA is stacked on top of each other, you could see that there are spaces or air pockets where your plant's roots can essentially breathe. Along with this, LECA is very porous, and so it works to wick up moisture and nutrients up the LECA through capillary action to provide nutrients and water for your plant. Using LECA is similar to using a very chunky soil mix for growing plants, but the main difference is that by itself, it doesn't have any nutrients that the plant can pull from. Therefore, you need to use a nutrient solution along with LECA to grow plants. Before you use LECA straight out of the bag, they're going to be completely dry and they will have a lot of clay dust on them. It is recommended that before you start, you should wash the LECA over a colander just to get rid of a lot of the dust. And it is recommended if you can to do this outside just because the clay dust I can't imagine that could be good for your pipes. But anyways, after this, I would recommend that you soak this LECA for at least 24 hours before using it. It is recommended that you do this first to allow the LECA to soak up as much water. So it's essentially primed um, to kind of easily take up uh, moisture and nutrients. And there are a lot of people that skip this step with success. I have never skipped this step, so I can't really speak about that. So yeah, I don't know. So to recap, LECA cannot be used by itself to grow plants. LECA needs to be used in conjunction with a nutrient reservoir. And before you use LECA for the first time, you should wash it off and let it soak overnight or for 24 hours, just so it's all primed up. Okay, so the next topic I'll talk about is the water. So this is going to be a very controversial topic to talk about, but again, this is just based on my personal experiences. In most cases, if you want to grow plants hydroponically, you should use reverse osmosis water or distilled water. Using one of these two options ensures that you're not feeding your plants any unwanted minerals that the plant doesn't necessarily like. And generally in the hydroponic world, a lot of people discourage the use of tap water. This is because around the world, tap water differs, but also tap water contains different additives that are not necessarily good for your plant. An example is the use of either chloramine or chlorine to clean our tap water. And although it ensures that we're able to drink the tap water, it's not necessarily good for your plants, so I hear. And also tap water can contain an excess amount of minerals. Saying all this, I use tap water. 
So I live in Toronto and looking at Toronto's water quality report, we actually have pretty good water. It's not perfect for passive hydroponics, but it's not bad. So I would strongly recommend if you want to think about using tap water for the use of hydroponics, you should look at your city's water quality report. Because like I said, water quality differs around the world and I know there are a lot of parts that have harder water. I forgot to mention that a lot of the nutrients that are sold are made for distilled water or reverse osmosis water, and they're not really made for the use in tap water. More about this in a bit, but I do use the Flora Micro hard water just to be safe. And so yeah, again, I would recommend looking at your tap water quality report, whatever you call it, in your city. Tying this all into the nutrients, so I'm just going to talk about everything I use in my nutrient solution. And to start off, I want to say that there are many brands out there, but I personally use the three-part Flora series by General Hydroponics. Like I said previously, I use the hard water version of the Flora Micro. And depending what you're growing, your plant's nutrient needs are going to differ. But I like to simplify things and use the same nutrient concentration for all my houseplants. These solutions contain the appropriate macronutrients that your plant needs to survive and obviously grow. So the macronutrients are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. These nutrients in the right quantities is a must when you're growing plants hydroponically. And yeah, so the directions are on the bottle here. So I always follow the general purpose mild vegetative growth. So that is roughly one teaspoon per gallon. One teaspoon in milliliters is five milliliters. And so therefore I do five milliliters of flora micro, five milliliters of flora grow, and five milliliters of flora bloom. I also include a calcium and magnesium supplement. This one is by General Hydroponics. It's called Cali Magic. This also contains micronutrients that your plants need like chelated iron. And again, I just follow the directions on the bottle. So I use five milliliters per gallon. Moving on, I also use this thing called Diamond Nectar. This stuff, guys, I really saw a difference when I started using this. So this encourages increased nutrient uptake by your plant, and it does this by increasing the nutrient availability. On top of that, this helps so much at buffering my nutrient solution. And so when I use this, I don't need to use any pH up or pH down. This kind of does the trick. Lastly, guys, I use a rooting hormone called Rapid Start by General Hydroponics. This aids in root branching and ultimately a healthier root system. So again, like the others, I read the bottle and I use two milliliters per gallon. So actually, let's include a recap, a list to the side here of all my nutrients and the concentration. And obviously, guys, this is going to differ from what you want to do with your plants and what you're growing. But this is just personally what I use. Okay, so moving on to the pH of your nutrient solution. It is recommended that you keep your pH between 5.5 to 6.5. This is considered the optimal range of nutrient availability. And if your pH drops too low or if it climbs too high, it can result in nutrients just becoming totally unavailable for the plant to uptake. You can buy electronic pH meters on the market, but I like to use, again by General Hydroponics, this pH test indicator. Okay, so you would fill up uh, halfway, about halfway full of water or nutrient solution. You take the test indicator bottle thing and you would put a few drops, one, two, three, and then you would shake it. And then you would kind of read based on the color on the side what your pH is. So you could see here that this is roughly, would you say that six? It's pretty yellow. So because a number of factors, your nutrient solution can either be above 
or below the optimal range. So at this point, you would buffer the pH by using either a pH up solution or a pH down solution. I unfortunately don't have any with me because luckily with all the solutions and my water, I don't need to buffer my solution. But I'll put some pictures here. So if the pH is above 6.5, you would use pH down. And if it's below 5.5, you should use pH up. Guys, I cannot stress enough, please be careful with these solutions. One of them is an acid. So if you can wear gloves or just be extra careful when handling them. And also I would recommend when you're applying it into your solution, I would do it drop by drop and test the solution frequently, just so you don't overshoot where you're going. Does that make sense? So to recap, your nutrient solution pH should be between 5.5 to 6.5, just because this is the optimal level of nutrient availability. And if your solution is either above or below this range, use the appropriate solutions to buffer the system so they are in that range. Moving on to the type of pot or planter. So you actually have a lot of options and I have a few to show you. You can have, I showed this in the beginning, but you could have a closed system here of LECA and you would essentially um, put the nutrient solution up to here. I personally don't prefer the system and I don't have any of my plants in this kind of closed container situation. But again, I know a lot of people have success with it. You can use a nursery pot and a pot or container with no holes. So for example, here is my Syngonium Podophyllum, what are you called again? Oreum Vergata. But I have her in a nursery pot and just a food container over here. So that'll do. And also, ooh, I love this one. So this is my variegated Schifflera. Oh, I love her. But anyways, she is in, can I do this? So she's in a green nursery pot. And this is an Ikea planter, like I said, with no drainage holes, just so it could hold onto the solution. You can also use one of these net pots. Um, they come in a lot of different sizes and you could just, for example, this glass is perfect because look, it just fits perfectly. And again, fill it up with LECA and put the nutrient reservoir just so it's touching a little bit like a third way up of the up. What are the words that I want to use? Just the third way up. Let's just go with that. And I guess another example, this is my Alocasia Silver Dragon, y'all. So she is in a big net pot here. Can y'all see it? And she is in a bucket. So that's her. You can get those kind of net pots at your local hydroponic store, or even Amazon has a few of those. And lastly, you could use various self-watering systems. So for example, this is a planter, a self-watering planter that I got from Amazon. This Aglionema is in Pawn, but it'd be the same idea. You would put LECA into here and then you could kind of tell based on the indicator uh, if you need to add any water, if you need to add a new nutrient solution. But I don't really like these just because these specific pots don't have any, any way to drain the solution and flush it out. But for example, a very similar one, these are the Lachusa uh, uh, pots over here. Um, and they do have the option to take the stopper out of the bottom so you could flush the plant and get rid of excess water. Or you could use my favorite, 90% of my plants in Lack and Passive Hydroponics are in these pots. So these are generally inexpensive. You could get these on Amazon in a pack of six. They come with, ooh, I don't even have this set up. So they come as a set. So this is the black net pot. It has some holes at the bottom. It also has a wick, so it could kind of sit in the nutrient solution and wick up the nutrients into the LECA and into your plant. And then it comes with this plastic container, which of course doesn't have any holes and they just sit on top of each other and your plant kind of just lives here. So again, there are different types of planters that you can use to grow plants hydroponically. But yeah, the ones that I like are these ones. And again, 90% of my plants are living in these kind of pots. So yeah, 
Okay, so we kind of touched on a lot of the basic components. And so now I'm going to show you the complete process of transferring a plant from soil into LECA and passive hydroponics. But before I do that, I'll show you how I mix my nutrient solution. So I have here a gallon jug. You could get these anywhere. And to be honest, you could use and recycle used juice containers, juice jugs juice containers. So again, this is filled with plain old tap water. If anyone is curious, I am testing what the starting pH is because I don't even know anymore. I don't usually check these days, but ooh, it's higher than I thought. <laughs> We're at about like a 7, 7.5 it seems. Some people will say that's a little too high to start off with. But yeah, again, my plants have been fine, so I'm going to keep doing what I do. Because these nutrients are highly concentrated and their pHs differ, I like to pour a little bit from the jug into these just random containers. And I like diluting a few of the nutrients first into here before I introduce it into the main nutrient solution jug. For example, I have learned that you should always mix your calcium and magnesium supplement first. But basically, if you introduce two solutions of different concentrations and pH together, this can result in nutrient lockout and nutrients precipitating into the solution, thus making them unavailable for your plant. So again, I'm starting off with calcium and magnesium. I'm giving it a good shake and I'm using these old syringes over here. So we have, uh, there was a bug that just flew in my window. You could see five milliliters over there and we are going to put it in the water set aside here, mix it up. And then from here, I'm gonna pour this solution into the main jug. I'm just gonna shake this a bit and this is very, sorry, I think it went my eye. It is very important to shake after each addition just to make sure everything is well incorporated. Next, you're going to add your Flora Micro in the three part series of Flora Micro, Flora Grow, Flora Bloom. It says in the instructions that you should always start with Flora Micro. And again, I use five milliliters per gallon. So I'm going to draw up five milliliters. Like the other one, dilute it. First, in one solution off to the side, and then fully incorporate it into the main solution. After Flora Micro's Flora Grow, I already shook it, so I'm going to take five milliliters, dilute it in a solution off to the side. <laughs> this might just be not a thing, but I feel more comfortable doing it. There actually was a time when I was starting out when I was putting them straight into the jug. And I don't know if it was because my concentrations were too high, but a lot of the solution was precipitating. So I started experimenting and this is kind of the method that I succeeded with. But again, I haven't seen anyone do this, so I might just be the crazy person. And the last one of the base nutrients is the Flora Bloom. So again, five milliliters. So the last two solutions are the Diamond Nectar, which I said previously helps in nutrient availability and absorption, and Rapid Start, which is the root, I can't talk, the rooting hormone. <laughs> and these can be added at the end directly into the jug. So I usually start with the Diamond Nectar, and we are doing five milliliters into the gallon. So five over here, we're going straight in. And for the rapid start, like said before, I am doing two milliliters right over here. Okay, so we have our solution made over here. Let's go and check the pH. So I'm just gonna take out a bit of the nutrient solution and put it in this container. Then I'm going to apply three drops here. One, two, three. And you could see guys, about, I wanna say five, maybe a little, five to six, 5.5, I would say. Okay, so now I'm going to show you guys how to transfer a plant. I am going to use my ZZ plant uh, to demonstrate for you guys. 
So first I'll talk about a few key points. You transferring your plant from soil into LECA is going to stress it out. So I would recommend doing this with a plant that has already acclimated to your environment and also a plant that is generally healthy. And also in my experience, I've had great luck starting out with a very well hydrated plant. And that just means that the soil isn't bone dry. Maybe the plant was watered two to three days prior. And this is truly a horrible example just because I like to keep my ZZ plants <laughs> relatively dry. So I don't know if it'll survive. The last point you want to try your very best to remove as much soil off the roots. Something that can happen if you don't and you kind of skip this step, it can lead to rot and basically the death of your plant. <laughs> so please, please, please be very patient while you're doing this. I know it's annoying. I also hate it, but yeah, try your very best. Okay, so we are looking at my kitchen sink right now. I have a plastic bag here just to catch any soil and just a stopper here also to catch anything that misses the bag. And yeah, we're just going to take this and remove it. Another, it's a bad example because the soil's really dry. And yeah, you're just going to slowly take off as much soil as possible. Okay, so I did the best that I could just by removing um, the soil with my hands. Um, I want to say that it's inevitable to lose, where's what the roots I was talking about? There are some roots that have broken off over here. Um, it's inevitable, just as long as you don't rip um, off a lot of the roots. But yeah, at this point, I'd clean up a little bit first. And basically, I would just run some water over here, over the roots, just to get um, rid of more uh, soil. Okay, so I removed most of the soil off of the roots. You could see that it's not perfect um, if I get real close. But um, I mean, it's the closest I'm going to get with these. Like I said, just don't keep chunks of soil on the roots um, just because it can lead to rot. And there is a process of shedding. Um, these roots aren't fully acclimated and they're not really grown to stand the conditions of like and passive hydroponics, but new roots will grow. Okay, so I'll just take one of the plants because it is clearly going to be too big if I include all three in this pot over here. So I'm going to take the LECA. Again, this LECA is pre-washed and pre-soaked. So we are going to put about a third or just a little bit on the bottom of the pot here, like so. Then you're going to take your plant and kind of see how it fits. And then from here, just hold on to it. And then just add on more LECA on top. In between the process guys of putting the LECA on top, I like to shake the plant or like slam it against the counter just so the LECA kind of disperses around like the nooks and crannies of the root system. So I'm just gonna do this for a little bit. And yeah, I guess there you have it guys. So she is in LECA, she's nice and anchored. I'm just going to grab the nutrient solution right over here. And we're just gonna pour it over the LECA into the cash po here. Oops, spilled a little bit. And we're gonna keep going and we're gonna check constantly to see that there's enough. Okay, so here's the nutrient solution. Can y'all, oh my God, this is a mess. Can y'all see it? <laughs> and then the net pot and then the plant with the LECA. So I like to keep my new transfers in a very sunny or well-lit area. Oh yeah, I totally forgot to talk about my routine. So basically I change my nutrient solution for all my plants roughly every two weeks. And every week in between, I do a top off 
of just plain old tap water into the nutrient reservoir of all my plants. And yeah, I do get a lot of questions about whether or not I flush all my plants. Flushing your plants is basically going into your sink, bathtub, and just having running water go through the medium like the leca here. This is really good for your plants just because through time there can be a lot of mineral or salt buildup that grows on grows it doesn't grow that accumulates on the leca so doing flushes often can kind of flush that out of the medium. <sighs> I do have to admit I do not do this. I wish I could if I had the time. And this is because I have over a hundred plants in LECA. So if you do have a smaller collection, I do recommend that, but I just don't have the time. Luckily my plants are still fine, hopefully. But yeah, I don't do that, but would definitely recommend it. Okay guys, I guess that's it. Can I just say thank you everyone for all your support. I know a lot of you have been waiting for this video and for me, I get in my head a lot whether or not I'm giving the right information and I want it to be as detailed as possible but also not like too detailed. Anyways, I'm doing it again. <laughs> But thank you so much guys for being so patient with me. So thank you so much. I know, I know, I know, I know I didn't include everything about LECA and passive hydroponics and I will be putting out more videos, more shorter videos um, about components of LECA and passive hydroponics. So if you do have any questions, I will welcome them in the comment section below and I'll probably I might include them in some videos in the future. So yeah, again, I'm always thankful for you guys. Um, don't think that I'm not thankful. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for you guys watching and giving feedback and liking the video and just following me on Instagram. Oh my gosh, I am so just shocked at all the love and support that I get from you guys. So again, I know I can't show you or thank you enough, but thank you guys so much. I I really, really appreciate it. Anyways, if you've made it to the very end, honestly, y'all deserve a medal. But if you've made it to the very end, thank you guys so much. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.